In this part, we are going to look at what is image force on a dislocation. So we have seen dislocation interactions and each dislocation exert a force on another dislocation. But here, the image force is a force which is exerted by a free surface of a material on dislocations which are very near to it or close to it. So let, let's understand what is image force. So let's consider this a surface of a material. Let me write it here. So this is a surface. This is a surface and this surface will exert a force on dislocations which are near to it. And let's consider the coordinate axis to be in this way that is x and y. And let us consider a skew dislocation, a right hand skew dislocation whose dislocation line is perpendicular to the screen. So this surface will exert a force on this screw dislocation. Now why this surface exert a force on this screw dislocation? Because the surface or the region near the surface is compliant. Let me write that term also. So the surface is compliant. What do I mean by compliant? That means when this dislocation reaches at surface, it, re it can reduce down its energy configurations because there will not be any stresses on this surface and thus the dislocation can attain its lower configuration. That is why it is get attracted towards the surface. Now let's look at this dislocation is at a distance d from the surface and let us consider the point O to be 0, 0. So this we are doing it to find out what is the force which is being exerted by this surface on the on this screw dislocations. So we have got introduced that the surface, the free surface exert a force on dislocations which are very near to it that may be screw or edge dislocations. In this, in this case, we are looking at a screw dislocation. So this screw dislocation we are considering is a pure and has an infinite length. Uh, the dislocation line is infinite, that is what I mean. And that is along a z-axis. Now let's look at the, what is the stress field around this screw dislocation. So we know the stress field around this screw dislocation. We have figured it out when we, when we discuss about a stress field around dislocations. So we know that a screw dislocation has a stress field which doesn't have any normal components and it has only shear components. So that means it doesn't have any hydrostatic components. It just have a deviatoric components of stress and thus this will be this we will be using to identify a force on a dislocation this screw dislocation by this surface so another important property of the surface is you have this tractions sigma xx sigma yx and sigma zx must be zero because once the dislocation reaches here there will not be any stresses which this screw dislocation will experience on this surface and thus this terms sigma xx, sigma yx and sigma zx must be 0 that is at point O that is at x equal to 0 these terms will turn out to be 0. Now if you see that the force exerted by this surface on this screw dislocation is attractive so let me mark it here so force exerted by this surface will be attractive and along this direction so we can consider this or when we try to find out what is a force exerted by this free surface we can consider that there is an another dislocation on the other side of this surface which is pulling this dislocation so let's consider a screw dislocation of opposite sign. So he, here it is a right hand screw, so this must be a left hand screw. And this dislocation 
is at a distance t from O and this dislocation attracts another screw dislocation that is in a real material and this dislocation we are considering to find out what is an attractive force on this dislocation by the surface. So that is why we call this dislocation as an image dislocation and thus the force exerted by this dislocation on the screw dislocation that is a real dislocation we call that force as an image force. Why we are doing this? Because this screw dislocation will be attracted towards the surface and to figure it out what can be that force on this screw dislocation by the surface we consider an image dislocation. Now if you want to write down what is sigma xx so sigma xx is 0 for we are considering a screw dislocations sigma yx is 0 so we have terms like sigma zx and sigma zy. These are these two terms. So we can write down the stresses because of these two dislocations at any given x and y as summation or we can say that this is a stress field of this dislocation that is a image dislocation minus the stress field of this dislocation. So that will be that will give us the stress field sigma zx at any x and y. So here sigma zx is given by gb upon 2 pi y upon x square plus y square. So we are writing down this as in this terms where you say x minus as x minus t and x plus is x plus t and a this term we are writing it as gb upon 2 pi. This is just for our convenience. So here we have mentioned that the stress field will be stress field of this dislocation minus stress field of this dislocation. So we get this term using this stress tensor. And similarly you can find out sigma z y. Sigma z y comes out to be so this is a sigma z y term and we can find out the total sigma z y. Now let's consider at point x equal to d what is the force per unit length. So let's find out what is the force per unit length on this screw dislocation from this surface that is d. We can find it out using this term that is fx sigma z y into b. So this is a force which is acting on this dislocation line because of the presence of this dislocation and that we call it as an image force. Now you can see from these two relations. So the glide force on this screw dislocation will be because of sigma zy because here if you consider y to be 0 so sigma zx turns out to be 0. This term turns out to be 0 on this glide plane and thus we consider sigma zy. So that's why we consider the force per unit length on this screw dislocation fx to be sigma zy into b. And now consider like find out this force at x equal to d and y equal to 0. This force comes out to be fx equal to minus gp square upon 4 pi t. So this will be an attractive force exerted by this surface on this screw dislocation. And we found out using a placing an image dislocation on the other side of this screw dislocation. So we get this relation that is fx equal to minus gp square upon 4 pi t. Now let's look at this condition where you have an edge dislocation. So you can use the similar scenario. You can get a stress field around an edge dislocation and find out what is a glide force on this plane, on this glide plane. And which component of this stress causes this glide force on this plane and try to see the what is an image force by this image dislocation on this edge dislocation. So what the final answer you will get will be fx equal to minus gb square upon 4 pi t to 1 minus mu. I leave it up to you to figure it out how this force comes. So in both the 
conditions where we considered pure age or pure screw dislocations. What we find is that this force per unit length and dislocation is inversely proportional to D. Let me write that down. So this Fx is inversely proportional to D. And this negative sign indicates that the force exerted on this dislocations beneath the surface or near to the surface will be in the will be towards the surface. So this negative sign indicates that this will be an attractive force which acts on the dislocations which are near to it. Now let's consider the importance of this image force on dislocations. So as we mentioned that image force on dislocations is inversely proportional to D. So what does it, it mean? So if I move away from the surface, the force exerted by the surface on the dislocation will, will start decreasing and it will become insignificant if I am away, too much away from the surface. So that is why this image force becomes significant when we have nanocrystals. As we know the dimensions of nanocrystals are in nanometers, so the dislocations will, will experience a force by these surfaces. So let us, let me explain it to you. So let us consider this is a nano material with some one dimension to be in nanometers. And let us say I have a dislocation over here. So this dislocation will feel a force near on it because of the surface. So let us consider this as a surface. So this surface will exert a force on this kind of dislocations. And thus these dislocations can go onto the surface and get removed from the material. And thus we have nanocrystalline materials will not find too much of dislocations inside it. And thus they possess a high strength also. Similarly, when we try to make TM samples, so we know that we make a TM samples to observe dislocations or microstructures. So in TM samples, the thickness which we observe under microscope is in nanometers. So this thickness, let me write it down. So this thickness of sample is something around 100 to 150 nanometers. And thus, when we try to see dislocations, so the surface will exert a force on these kind of dislocations and in the sample and they will get onto the surface and get annihilated also or get removed from the sample and thus whatever the dislocations which we are observing in TM, TM sample may not be true sometimes. So that is why an image force play an important role in, during TM observations. Now when you have thin films also, so thin films also will have dimensions in nanometers the surface of these thin films can exert a force on these dislocations and thus they can be removed from the thin films another important aspect of image force is interfaces of elastically different materials so let me explain it to you so let, let's have two interfaces where we have one interface or one material is this and let's consider another material this so let's consider g1 and g2 are shear modules if g1 is greater than g2 so what will happen so if consider the shear modulus of this material is greater than shear modulus of this material what will happen is that the dislocations in G2 will get repelled away from this interface. So if there are dislocations here, so they will get repelled away if in this condition. If G1, let me write it down, if G1 is less than G2, these dislocations will experience. So these dislocations, these dislocations will experience an attractive force towards the interface. So these are the importance of image force when we have two elastically different materials. Another important thing is for a material, let's say if, let me write it down, if image force is 
greater than tau pn that is pulse nabaru stress the material or the dislocations near to it will spontaneously experience some force and they get they will reach to the surface and this is an important situation where dislocations can removed from the surface immediately so with this i will stop here